How's it going out there? This is Sergio with Word on the Street. Today, we're going to look at the inflation numbers released. We'll look at a warning by Jeffrey Gunlock regarding the yield curve. For the trade example, I have a broken wing butterfly. Now, let's look at the market internals. Today, the Dow Jones went up 0.11%, NASDAQ up 0.23%, and the S&P 500 up 0.28%. All of them relatively flat, started the day a lot higher, gave it all back, finished slightly up. Looking at the sectors, basic materials was the big winner for today with a 1.99% upside, energy with a 1.13% upside, and the losers were consumer defensive with a 0.08% downside, and healthcare with a 0.62% to the downside. Looking at some of the big winners for today, we have Freeport McMoran with a 5.02% upside, Take Two Interactive with a 5.15% upside, Tesla with a 3.93% upside, Coterra Energy with a 6.07% upside, and Applied Materials with a 4.66% upside. Looking at the most active options, we have AbbVie, Apple, Tesla, Lucid, Freeport McMoran, Ford, AMD, and Microsoft. The first thing I wanted to discuss is the CPI number that came out earlier today. Inflation is through the roof. We have a 7% gain year over year, and it's looking like it's going to continue to go up. Let's take a look. Stocks rise as investors eye inflation data, showing biggest jump since 1982. Stocks rose Wednesday as investors eyed a new report on inflation, which showed another decade's high rate of price increases across the recovering economy. This came a day following remarks from Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, reasserting that the central bank would step in as needed to rein in rising prices. The Bureau of Labor Statistics December Consumer Price Index CPI showed prices rose at a 7% year-over-year rate at the end of 2021, marking the fastest increase since 1982. This matched consensus estimates based on Bloomberg data and accelerated from November's already elevated 6.8 increase. On a month-over-month -month basis, consumer prices rose 0.5% or slightly more than the 0.4 rise expected to mark an 18th consecutive month of price increases. Excluding food and energy prices, the so-called core measure of consumer prices rose 5.5% in December over last year, coming in at the fastest rate since 1991. It moves on to talk about Jay Powell and his renomination hearing yesterday before the Senate Banking Committee and how this helped alleviate some of the worries that people had. He's coming out saying that the Fed's going to do whatever it can to bring down inflation. A lot of people think that he's way behind here. He should have done something a while back. The inflation persists. They keep trying to reassure people that the inflation is transitory. What do you all think? What's going to happen in 2022? Will the inflation continue to go up? At this point, that's what we've seen thus far. Are they doing enough to really tame this inflation? Since he's a bit late to the party, if they decide to get hawkish, does this mean we're on our way to a recession? It states that the central bank was eyeing three interest rate hikes, but now most people in Wall Street think that four rate hikes are going to happen this year. Fed Powell didn't speak too much about the balance sheet, which is over $9 trillion at this point. Then it goes on to show this chart, pandemic crash followed by boom and bumpy 2022. It shows the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. It shows us February of 19, where we're in an all-time high. Then we had the big drop due to the pandemic. We quickly turned around late March, early April. The S&P made the first high on August 18th, first all-time high, and we haven't looked back since. What do y'all think? Is this going to continue in 2022? First week of the year, we had a decent amount of downside from the triple Qs, the NASDAQ. A lot of the growth has taken a huge hit, and now we find ourselves in a situation where if the Fed decides to hike four times, will the market drop? Will we go into a bear market? What do y'all think? Comment below. Next up, we have a warning by the Bond King himself, Jeffrey Gunlaw, regarding where the yield curve is and where it might head in 2022. Let's read. The yield curve is no longer sending a don't worry, be happy signal, warrants Bond King Jeffrey Gunlaw. 
Are stocks ready to break away from the rocky start to 2022? The S&P 500 snapped a five-session losing streak on Tuesday after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell vowed the central bank will use its tools to get inflation under control without damaging the economy. And equity futures are rising after data showing the fastest annual rise in consumer prices since 1982. A rebound with teeth to it may not quite be here yet, say some. Bounces from oversold levels tend to be hard and fast, and yesterday's 150-point intraday reversal definitely counts as hard and fast, noted Jenny Zadens of the Cracked Market blog. That said, more often than not, the third bounce is the real deal, meaning we could see a couple tests of the lows before this is all said and done. It shows a chart right here talking about the bounce we had yesterday, Tuesday. After Jerome Powell spoke, we had a complete U-turn and the market just shot up all afternoon and continued a little bit more today. Then it talks about double line CEO Jeffrey Gunlock who unveiled predictions for the year ahead. He sees headwinds for the stock market as the stock market has been supported by quantitative easing and now the market faces Fed tapering. Powell sounding more and more hawkish by the day as inflation gets out of hand. He goes on to talk about what Jay Powell said yesterday and claims that he's repeating the 2018 formula. NQE and raise official short-term interest rates. This was all done on a webcast to his clients. He says he's not predicting a recession, but he definitely sees pressure building up. He goes on to talk about the yield curve flattening. He states that we're very close to it being a sign of economic weakening. He's warning his clients to pay attention. He went on to show his clients a chart regarding consumer sentiment and how it's continuously dropping. He talked about cars, used cars cost, how it's gone up so high and how it's a big indicator of things to come. And he's just overall very cautious. We may enter some turbulent times in the not too distant future. He goes on to talk about the housing market and how it's being boosted by low supplies and low interest rates. He is neutral on gold and sees the dollar continuing to weaken. He also believes that the US market is overvalued and that the European market is much more attractive. Here he shows us a chart of the S&P 500 MSCI Europe relative PE ratio. It's at the level where European stocks in the past have started to outperform. Keep this in mind as you invest. So what do you guys think of Jeffrey Gunlock's warning? Do you all feel that the European markets are going to do better than the S&P 500 this year? He had a similar forecast for last year, but I believe the S&P 500 fared off better. Do you guys think we might be entering a recession or that the recipe is there for a potential downturn? Comment below. Let me know what you all think. Moving on to today's example trade, I have a broken wing butterfly that I will be setting up for American Airlines. As we get more and more used to living with this pandemic, people are deciding to fly more and more. I see American Airlines having a decent upside moving forward. Let's have a look at this example. So here is the put broken wing butterfly. A put broken wing is bullish, has limited profit and limited loss. Similar to a put butterfly spread, but with a slightly bullish bias. It has a higher chance of profit and removes risk from one side. Time is generally harmful, except when it is profitable near strike B. Also known as a skip strike butterfly. So the way I went ahead and set this up is I shorted two 21 puts and I bought the 13 put as well as the 23 put. The net credit is $99, the max loss is $501, and the max profit is $299. Our break even is at $18.01, which gives us 2.6% to the downside, and our chance of profit is approximately 57%. Our peak profit occurs at the 21, where we have shorted two puts, we have no risk to the upside, and all our risk is below $18. Keep in mind that American Airlines has earnings coming up, so I would look to probably hold this trade for a week or so. If you want to hold the trade for longer and the trade goes against you, you can always roll it to March or April. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. The inflation numbers are looking rather dreary. 7% year over year is massive. We have a scenario where there's a lot of people out there suffering. I'm not sure if the raises that people have gotten suffice to balance out this inflation. There has been a ton of money that has gone right up to the 1%. I believe that we're at record earnings for most of the billionaires in the US. Do you guys think that Jay Powell is late to the party? Do you think rates should have gone up a while ago? 
Is Jeffrey Gunlock correct? Do you guys think that Europe's gonna grow more than the US this upcoming year? What do you guys think of the put broken wing butterfly? Do you guys understand how to roll a trade? Would you have set it up differently? Beware that earnings season is starting later this week. If you guys have any questions regarding rolling options or any of the strategies presented on this channel, please comment, let me know. I will try and answer your questions as best as I can. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.